What's up everyone, welcome to part 2 of our root finding tutorial series. And in this one I'm going to show you how to find your roots using SciPy. So in part 1 we looked at Newton's method and we looked at the equations, we did a basic example and programmed the algorithm ourselves. And this is great for learning, but it's not very practical. So instead we want to use a much more optimized library that SciPy offers. So we're going to go step by step and how to find roots for a basic example. So let's get started. So SciPy has a library called Optimize, and it's full of functions for doing things like finding local minimum, local maximum, and root finding. So the one we're interested in is if we come down to root finding section and then multidimensional, there's a function called root. This is the function we're going to use to find the roots of polynomials. So if we scroll down to the notes section, we'll see that root is based on a thing called minpack. So minpack is basically a set of Fortran subroutines that were written by a bunch of scientists and it's used for solving systems of nonlinear equations. So it's highly optimized and it's implemented in Fortran so it's really fast and this is basically what we want to use. And to make it simple for us, SciPy has taken this code and given us a nice interface so we can use this really optimized code with just one line of Python code. So pretty impressive if you ask me. Now let's see how this function works. So what I'm gonna do is jump over to a notebook that I prepared and there'll be a link in the description where you can download it through my GitHub. And what I've done is plotted a simple cubic polynomial. So you can see here that this polynomial, it has three different roots where it crosses the x-axis. So now let's see how we can use the scipy root function to find these roots. So in the next slide, I've got two blank cells which we can program in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is our imports. So we'll import numpy as mp, and then from scipy, we're going to import optimize. And now what I wanna do is create a function for our polynomial. So the polynomial that we wanna use is right here. And what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this function in. So we called it fun, it takes in some x array, and we also have imports for the four coefficients. All right, now let's see how to use this root function to find roots of our polynomial. So we're gonna create an object called sol, which stands for solution, and we're gonna call optimize.root. And the way this function works is we're gonna pass it our polynomial or our function that we wanna solve for, which is fun. And then we need to pass it our guesses for the roots. And you have to give it the number of guesses based on the number of roots that the polynomial has. So you saw here that we're using a cubic and it's got three roots. So just by looking at this, I'm gonna guess minus two for this one, positive two for this one, and positive six for this one. So let's go ahead and give it a list. And we said it was gonna be minus two, two, and six. Cool. And that's all we really need to pass in order for this thing to, to work. So in order to get the output, this soul is actually a dictionary. So the item from the dictionary that we want is called X. So if we run this, you can see here, we get an array back and the roots are minus one, 2.26 something and 5.7 something. If we want to check if our solution is valid, what we can do is call message and we'll get a message of yes, it converged or no, it didn't. And if you want to see what options you have, like I said, this is a dictionary, so you can just call keys and these are all the different outputs that our solution has. Now let's check visually that our solutions are valid by plotting these things. So the first thing I'm going to do is we can get rid of this. Let's create an X array using linspace, and we'll go from minus two to seven, and we'll give it a thousand points. Now, let's go ahead and plot our function. So we'll pass it x, and then fun of x, and let's just make the line a little thicker. Next, let's plot our solution points. So what we're gonna do is, let's plot the x values, 
and then we'll also evaluate our function at those x values and they should be zero and we'll just use diamonds and we'll make the marker size a little bit bigger then let's just add a horizontal line at the origin so zero we'll make the color gray and we'll make the line width 0.5 so it's not too big and then let's show it cool so you can see here here's our three points so they're at the x values that our root function returned and then when we evaluate the function at those points you can see the function is equal to zero so they are in fact roots of the equation now I'd like to show you some limitations of this algorithm. So you can see in the example here, we got the right answers and that's because we gave good enough guesses. But if we were to guess poorly, we could get the wrong answers. So in order to show that, first let me zoom out to make a little room. I'm gonna copy our solution here. And instead of guessing two, I'm gonna guess, um, let's do minus six. Now, when we do sol.x, you can see that we get the same two answers for these two values. So because this six is over here, it's gonna converge here and it's not smart enough to say, oh, I already found this root, I'm gonna try and find another one. So if we don't guess a point that's in between here, we're never gonna find this root. So if I, for example, go high, you know, now these we're getting the same root twice here. We need to pick something in between. That's why it's important to understand your function, probably plot it, and get an idea of where the roots are, and then use this function to fine tune the value. So I hope you found this video useful, and I hope you can appreciate just how powerful this SciPy library is. We're getting these really good algorithms that really smart people have worked on for years, and we're getting the ease of Python for implementing them. So. If you like the video, give it a like. If you've got any questions or confusion, comment below, or we can chat in Facebook. Also, um, the slides are available on GitHub, so feel free to use them. They'll help you with this a lot, I promise. So check them out. And yeah, in the next one, um, we'll probably look at some more stuff with SciPy. So stay tuned. See ya.